Hey fam, hope you're all doing well. Wanted to share a quick little thing with you here about what I learned in this book about Thomas Jefferson. So what's really interesting is how we are beginning to see within the text how his Virginian wartime experience has added to his character. Now, apparently in the Confederation Congress of 1783, there was really a deep sense of worry about anarchy. And Jefferson was, you know, pretty contempt with the whole thought of anarchy, right? So he didn't want region turning on region, state turning on state. So he really actually wanted to keep peace. Seems a little bit different now how it's sort of becoming more divided today. But I thought it was quite interesting how Jefferson seems to have this aura of, no, we don't want a bunch of anarchy, especially when Britain is, you know, at our heels and such. Now, the author contends that Jefferson wanted the central government to have a really national binding force. And that's really, he contends, the only answer, and that Jefferson wanted to strengthen the band of the Union. So, quite interesting, isn't it? Now, another interesting point is that John Jay, who contributed to the Federalist Papers, if you're also following that, on a couple of videos I've done on that, in 1786, John Jay's writing to Jefferson, and here's what he wrote. He writes, To vest legislative, judicial, and executive powers in one and the same body of men, and that two in a body daily challenge its members can never be wise. So this one was a little interesting because when I first read it, I thought, so term limits, where does he fit in that? I understand you don't want too many changing of the members because maybe they won't learn the ropes, the loopholes, and spot where it needs to be fixed. But I doubt he would have wanted you know, career politicians like Pelosi and Biden and others, you know, Diane Feinstein, Chuck Schumer, people who've been in there for a while. I don't think he would consider them wise, but more greed-filled power mongers. So I think John Jay has some interesting points on that. It would be cool to travel back in time, have a cool conversation with him and see what he meant. Now, apparently, though, Jefferson told James Monroe this really cool quote that I want to share with you because I think it sounds like just like, whoa. Here he goes. He goes, There never will be money in the treasury till the Confederacy shows its teeth. The states must see the rod. Perhaps it must be felt by some one of them. Without a powerful union, he expected the worst, the author states after that quote. So, the states must see the rod. That's pretty interesting. They want the band to be strong. They want, you know, disciplined, unitary force with structure, right? Central, national control. Very clear where they are. They have, there's definitely not a sense of anarchy. So if the rod has to be used by the federal union holders to keep the states within the union, it should be done, apparently, clearly is what he's stating here. Very interesting, is it not? Hope you enjoyed that. It's quite interesting. John Jay is coming up in this book too, so we're probably going to have to read a biography on him later.